Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we'll be going through all the steps needed to create a conditional order on Thinkorswim. Now, if you're new to trading, you might be asking yourself what actually is a conditional order. Basically, it's a way to create a more complex order within Thinkorswim. It's gonna allow you to set parameters that need to be met before an actual order is submitted. Now, this can be based off simple things like stock price or time, or they could be more complex based off technical indicators or fundamentals. Now, one easy example of this would be, let's say you wanted to buy some shares of Netflix, but you only wanted to buy those shares of Netflix went down to $400 a share and you only wanted that order good from 10 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. That would be a condition. Now that's a very simple time condition. Basically you're setting a time parameter, the only time frame you want this order good for, but they can be far more complex than this. For example, let's say you also wanted to stipulate that you don't want to purchase those shares unless the stock crosses below its 50 day moving average or unless the stock was oversold on the RSI. Now you can also create conditions based off of other underlyings. For example, let's say you only wanted to buy shares of Apple when Microsoft crossed below their 52 week low. I'm not sure why you would want to do that, but that's something you could implement as a condition. Now I will say that you're typically only going to use this one when you're trying to put in orders on options based off the underlying stock versus the actual options price. That'd be like if you owned a call option on Amazon, and rather than saying, I wanna sell this call option when the option trades for $10, you're instead saying, I only wanna sell this option when Amazon's stock price crosses above 3,600. So instead of using Amazon the option, you'd be basing it off of Amazon the stock when you decide to sell. Now you could also use this in reverse, using it as a stop, saying, hey, that same Amazon call option, if Amazon the stock ever goes down below 3,500, go ahead and stop me out of this call option. Now we're gonna go through each one of these individually, but if you guys wanna skip ahead to a certain type of conditional order, check out those timestamps down below in the description to jump ahead. Now the very first one we're gonna jump into is a conditional order based on time. Now the first thing we have to do is actually bring up an order ticket. So we're gonna go ahead and click on the asking price for Apple, 137.10 right now. To access the conditional order screen, all we have to do is go down to the order ticket itself, and on the far right hand side, you're gonna see a little gear icon. All we're gonna do is go ahead and click on that and our condition order screen opens up. That's what this box is right here on the screen. This is where all of the conditions are set up, but again, the very first one we're gonna do is based off of time and it's the simplest one to do. Now a time contingent order simply means that we're not gonna submit this trade until a specific time or we're gonna cancel it at a specific time. So let's say we wanted to put out an order to buy 10 shares of Apple at 137.10, the current price right now, but we didn't want that order to submit until 10 a.m. tomorrow on July the 1st. And if it hadn't filled by 1.30 that same day, July 1st, first we want it to cancel itself automatically what we're going to do is find this little clock right here we're going to click on the little check mark box to the left of it from there we're going to change the date in this case to july 1st because we wanted the order to submit on july the 1st and we wanted to submit at 10 a.m so we're going to go ahead and highlight this box right here and go ahead and type in 10 a.m and the only thing frustrating with this is it has to be in this very specific template so you have to do hours minutes and seconds. Next up, we want it to cancel itself at 1.30, so we'll go ahead and make the same change over here on the right, changing it to July the 1st, and we're gonna change this to 13.30, and that's the other thing about this is it does have to be in military time. And there we go, we've now got an order that's ready to go first thing in the morning, but it's not gonna submit until 10 a.m. on July the 1st, and if it hasn't filled yet by 1.30 p.m., it's gonna go ahead and cancel itself. All we have to do is hit save, and we'd hit confirm and send just like normal. Now, if you wanted to double check yourself, and that goes for all conditional orders, if you go back to that little gear icon, to the conditional order screen, down here at the bottom in this little description box, it's actually going to list off exactly the type of order we're gonna submit. Down here on line number two, you can see that it's gonna wait until July the 1st at 10 a.m. to submit, and it's gonna cancel the order automatically on July the 1st at 13.30, 1.30 p.m. So if you're ever worried about submitting this incorrectly, you can just come back here and, and make sure it's reading off exactly your intentions for the order. Now we'll go ahead and delete this one out of here and the next one we're gonna cover is creating an order based off of a technical indicator. Now to get some good practice, we'll actually put in a couple of indicators. We're gonna say we still wanna buy these shares of Apple, but we only wanna put in the order to buy the shares if Apple is oversold in the RSI and the stock price is currently above its 50 day moving average. So just like before, we're gonna go ahead and create an order ticket to buy the stock. We're gonna come over here to the gear icon on the far right hand side. But instead of using these time boxes up here, we're gonna come down here to these empty black boxes and click in the little black box below the word symbol. From there, it's gonna autofill the current symbol we're trading, which is Apple. We're gonna go ahead and click in the black box below method. And from there, we're gonna go down to the very bottom where it says study and we're gonna hit edit. Now this is where we're gonna manually create the indicator that we're trying to base this trade off of. In our case, we're gonna first delete what auto fills in here, and we're gonna hit add a condition. Now we're gonna start by creating the oversold indication on the RSI, so we're gonna go up here to select a condition. We're gonna go ahead and click on study. We're gonna type in RSI up here at the top. We're gonna click on RSI in the list here. We're gonna go ahead and say is less than. 
We're gonna select a condition, we're gonna select value, and like we said before, we're only wanting to submit this trade if it's currently oversold in the RSI, so we're gonna change this value from 100 to 30, and we're gonna leave this as within one bar, which in our case, we're gonna use a daily chart, so that means within the past day in this case. We'll go ahead and hit save. We'll make sure that it still says D up here for day, so we'll leave that B, and we're gonna come down here and hit okay. Next up, we're gonna add the condition looking for the stock currently above the 50-day moving average. So just like before, we'll click in the black box, we'll click in the next box over, we'll come on down to study, click on edit, we'll delete what's currently in there, we'll add another condition, we're gonna go ahead and select a condition, but this time we're gonna go off price, and we're gonna click close, so the current price of the stock is currently greater than, and we're gonna click study this time, we'll go ahead and type in simple for simple moving average, and from there we simply need to change it from a nine day simple moving average to a 50 day simple moving average. And if you're at all used to creating custom scans, you're probably very familiar with this page. If you're not used to using this page, it is gonna take a lot of practice before you're comfortable with it, but I really recommend you do get comfortable with it because this is a skill you can use all across the platform, whether it be using it to create custom scans, create conditional orders, or creating your own studies or, or technical indicators later down the line. So I definitely recommend you get comfortable with it as soon as you can. Now in our case, we'll again go ahead and hit save. We'll leave it as a daily chart. So we'll leave the D up here and we'll go ahead and hit okay. And just like before, we'll just hit save when we're done. And if we wanted to double check our work, making sure that it's gonna do exactly what we want it to do, we'll go ahead and click on this little gear icon. Looking down below in the description box, you can again read off the conditions that have to be met before this order is submitted. And again, if we read line number two here, it says wait until at least one of the following conditions is satisfied. So this right here is showing that I was about to make a mistake Mistake. because remember when I was submitting this order I wanted both of these studies to be true I wanted the stock to both be oversold in the RSI and the current price to be above the 50-day moving average what I was about to create is a conditional order that only needs one of these to be true either it's oversold in the RSI or the price is above the 50-day moving average so right there it's pointing out my glaring mistake so what we're gonna do is correct that we're gonna go ahead and delete that second study I added all we have to do is click on it hit the backspace button and hit enter and it deletes that second condition from the screen next up we're gonna come back here and edit this one so come up here to study, we're gonna edit it, and we're gonna add another condition to this one. Up here, we'll do exactly what we did before because everything was right, we just did it kind of in an incorrect order. So we'll come up here to the little arrow, we'll click on price, close, is greater than, select a condition, study condition, go ahead and type in simple again, and we're gonna change that from the nine to the 50. We're gonna go ahead and save it and hit okay. Now we can see the description box down below has changed. It's saying, wait until the following condition is satisfied. Apple is currently less than 30 on its RSI, so oversold and the closing price so the last traded price is currently greater than the 50-day moving average so now this is corrected it's only going to submit this trade to buy the 10 shares of apple at 137.10 when both of these conditions have been met so now we can hit save and if we wanted to continue with the order we just hit confirm and send now, as you probably noticed that one was a lot more complicated than the simple time frame condition so definitely check that out a few times if you need a little bit more practice with it a little bit more repetition because it will take time now the next one we're going to create is an order based off of the underlying stock itself. Now the reason we typically are going to do this is if we're placing a trade on an option contract that we want to be based off of the underlying stock rather than the option price. So we're going to continue using Apple in this example. We'll delete this order ticket out of here. And what we're going to do is submit an order to buy the 138 call on Apple if the underlying stock of Apple falls down to let's say 136 a share. So we'll go ahead and click on the asking price to generate that order ticket. We're going to come over here to the right hand side, the little gear icon. Just like in the previous example, we're going to click in the black box below the word symbol. It auto generates generates the symbol of the stock. So we are using Apple in this case. We're gonna say method. So the mark price or the last traded price basically for Apple stock. And we're gonna say is less than or equal to. And I think we just said we only wanted to submit this trade to buy the contract if the stock fell below 136. And there you go. We now have the condition. So this order will not submit to buy the 138 call until the underlying stock of Apple itself crosses below $136 a share. Now you could also base this off of a different underlying stock. Let's say for some reason you only wanted to buy these shares of Apple if Microsoft fell below, let's say 220. So we're gonna come over here to the gear icon again. Just like before, it's pretty straightforward. We just click in the symbol box, but instead of Apple here, we're gonna delete that out and type in Microsoft. From there, we'll go ahead and click in the method box. Mark price, we'll leave it. We're gonna say less than or equal to, and we said 220. And there you go. We're only gonna submit this order to buy 10 shares of Apple if Microsoft goes below 220. To be fair, I don't know a single reason why you would do this. Really, it's made for options traders like we talked about before, but I really just wanted to point it out in case for some reason you wanted to buy stock if another stock made a certain move. Now, the very last one we're gonna go over is how to create a conditional order that acts as a stop for an option. 
Now, I'm sure you already know how to put stops on options. It's just like putting a stop in for a stock, but this one is to base it off of the underlying stock price rather than the option price. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and cancel this out and we'll delete this order ticket. So in this example, we're gonna pretend that we already own the 138 calls. Now we only wanna sell these contracts or get stopped out if Apple falls below 135. So that's the price at which we say we want to get out of this thing. We don't want to lose any more money. So if Apple ever falls below 135, automatically sell my contracts for me. So in this case, we'll go ahead and click on the bid price of those 138 calls to generate the sell ticket. From there, we'll go over to the little gear icon on the right hand side. We're going to go ahead and click on symbol, method, less than or equal to, and we're going to go ahead and type in 135. And there you go. Now we've based the price off the underlying stock rather than the option price. But you may have noticed there's a problem with this. Right now, we're saying we want to submit this trade when Apple falls below 135, but the order we're about to submit is a limit order to sell it at 153. For those of you active options traders out there, I'm sure you see the problem right off the bat. We don't know what the option value is going to be when Apple stock falls below 135. We can make a guess, but the problem is we don't know when it's going to happen and we don't know what volatility is going to be when it does happen. Now, what most people would probably tell you to get around this is simply changing this from a limit order to a market order. Now, in this case, we don't need to know whatever the option price is at that time. If Apple ever falls below 135, it's going to submit a market order to sell the contracts and get you out immediately. The problem with this is we don't know what you're going to sell at. We don't know what the bid ask spread is going to be at that time. And if you submit a market order on an option, you're basically asking to get fleeced. At some point, you're going to sell these contracts far below what they're actually worth just because there's a wide bid ask spread, just because there's no liquidity in these contracts. So what you can do to somewhat protect yourself, again, nothing's going to be perfect, but one thing you could do is switch this back to a limit order. Instead of having this limit link to man, which just means that I'm putting in a price myself, we're going to go ahead and click on that and scroll on down to mark. And right now you can see that it defaults to limit offsets to zero, zero. So what this is saying is we're still going to submit a limit order, but we're going to submit a limit order at whatever the current mark or mid price is at the time of this condition. So let's say, for example, when Apple falls down to 135 a share, this contract is trading for 50 cents by 60 cents. That means the current mid price on this option is 55 cents, and that's where we're going to submit our limit order. So if Apple ever falls down to 135, we're going to submit a limit order to sell this contract at 55 cents. What that does is protect us from the event of just filling out whatever the current bid is, which could be an absolutely terrible price. If we wanted to be a little bit more cautious as well and be more likely to get a fill, we could actually reduce this limit offset. So we could say, hey, minus five. So again, in that same example, saying that the bid is 50 cents, the ask is 60 cents. In this case, the midpoint would be 55 cents. And we're saying, hey, the mid is 55, but we want to put in an order five cents below that. So the order would go in at 50 cents. If we always wanted to try and get a better price than whatever the current mid is, we could bump that up. And now let's say that when Apple crosses below 135, whenever that happens, let's say the bid ask is 40 cents by 60 cents. So the midpoint is 50 cents. Our limit order would go in at 55 cents at that time. So again, this is a little bit complicated when you're first getting started. You are definitely going to want to practice with this quite a few times before you actually implement it in your portfolio. But I'm sure a lot of you guys out there are trying to figure out ways that you can place orders on your options and base those orders off the underlying stock price or create stops based off the underlying stock price. And this is how you can do it and do it a little bit safer than just using market orders. And I know we went through all of those pretty quick, so feel free to use some of those timestamps below to jump back to a specific one if you do need some more practice with it. Also, if you did find this video helpful, please leave it a like and consider subscribing to the channel. As always, if there's anything you guys have questions about, leave it down below in the comments and I'll answer them all as best as I can. But I hope we all make some money this week and I'll catch you guys all in the next video.